Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.6 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to Tutorial 11, Dumb Bombs. Today we're going to go through CCIP and CCRP modes for deploying dumb or unguided bombs in the Mirage 2000. In the Mirage, it's a little bit unusual in that you don't get to choose your deployment method. It's actually preset by the aircraft, depending on the weapon type. Uh, weapons which are low drag will always drop in CCRP mode. Weapons which are high drag will always deploy in CCIP. CCIP being constantly computed impact point, and CCRP being constantly computed release point, where you have a pre-designated point where you want the bombs to drop. Uh, CCIP is a more kind of weapon of uh, target of opportunity mode. So in this first example, I'm carrying Mark 82 Air. Uh, these are uh, Balut uh, high drag bombs in the 500 pound category. It's uh, the aircraft is capable of carrying Mark 82s of the various varieties, both low drag and the two high drag ver varieties, either Air or Snake Eye. It's also capable of carrying the Samp 250, 250 kilogram weapons, which I think are the kind of French equivalent. Uh, they're 250 kilo available in both high and low drag variants. Uh, like I said, today we're carrying Mark 82 Airs, and this is the maximum possible loadout for the Mark 82. It's possible to carry Mark 82s singly or doubly on the wing stations, which are 2 and 8. Uh, the outer wing stations can uh, only carry kind of rockets or missiles. Uh, and then on the center line stations, you can carry weapons singly on stations 3, 4, 6, and 7. The center line station is not cleared uh, for unguided weapons. So I, I could carry one more bomb on the center line, or even a double rack on the center line, but only for uh, GBUs for some reason. I don't know why that is the case. Um, so this is the maximum possible loadout. We have eight bombs, and this is Mark 82 Air, as I said. So let's go over the setup of employing this weapon. First thing to note is that the weapon profile is either going to be BF or BL. Uh, BF indicates high drag bombs and BL indicates low drag bombs. We first will take a little look at the PPA on the right hand side here and we're going to set our weapon parameters. We have fusing, number of bombs to drop, and distance, all programmable here. I'm going to program the system to drop all eight bombs in a single pass, and I'm also going to set spacing of 0, 4. Now this spacing is in tens of meters, so that's a 40 meter spacing that I've programmed it for. Fusing defaults to inert, which is in the down position. Middle position is retarded, which means it will be a delayed um, detonation, and then you've got instantaneous. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go uh, retarded on the fusing. We can then choose the weapons profile. We're going to choose BF1, uh, which is the loadout we have here today. We have options on the top line for TAS and RS. This is the same as we had for the rockets. Uh, TAS means that the radar will be used for ranging, and RS means that we can also use the radar altimeter as a source of information. Uh, we want both of these turned on. There are very few circumstances in which you would turn these off. We're then going to go Master Arm On. And if I now go and take a little look at the HUD, I'm going to press Weapons System Command Switch Forward. On doing that, I get Symbology. So uh, let's go ahead and pause right now and we can confirm all of the symbology that we have here. Uh, so first thing we have is BF, that's just confirming again that we're using high drag bombs. Uh, we have the um, impact location here uh, as a, a hexagon. Um, and it's got wings. That means that the position is currently accurate. Uh, we have the, the bomb fall line, which comes from the flight path marker, and then we have the kind of uh, allowable pitch for that. Now, this is a, an initial set of symbology that appears. Uh, the more accurate symbology appears once we get closer to the target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the aircraft and get a little bit closer to our actual bombing range, and then I'll show the symbology you get when you're close to the ground and close to the target. So uh, be right back. Okay, you rejoin me a little bit closer to the target here. I'm going to descend and bring myself a bit closer to the intended uh, target area here. I'm going to bring it down to about 4,000 feet, I think. That should do it. 
Uh, you can see, uh, I'm actually just going to pause here, you can see an INS waypoint location showing on the HUD. That's actually the position of the target I want to attack, and we have the bomb fall line showing normally just now. Uh, I also have an indication saying that if I want to improve my accuracy, I should really uh, have a lower angle than what I have just now. Uh, that's maybe suggesting that actually I've... Uh, overdone it a little bit and I've descended too much, uh, I probably want to be in at least a 20 degree uh, drop. Here we go. Right, so I've got the ball fall the bomb fall line going through the target. Let's uh, maneuver to keep that on target. I'm going to wait for symbology. There is my symbology. Okay, it's actually still telling me that I should be diving more steeply, so this might not be the best... Um, employment ever but it will work um so you'll see that at the end of the bomb fall line we have uh this little hexagon here uh or it's not really a hexagon this symbol this is the uh, initial impact location you'll then see that we have a gap in the line that's the last bomb impact point so between here and here the bombs will fall um now one thing to note is that when the system is very uh, accurately computed the first impact point this point will gain wings it actually currently doesn't have wings which is telling us that uh, its location is not super accurate right now it's now accurate, oh, and I actually, I took too long uh, in doing that, so I'm coming away again. Right, let's, uh, let's come around and we're going to try that again. I'm going to climb this time and I'm going to try and make a steeper approach towards that target. Because uh, I, I think, you know, as the symbology is telling me here, uh, I'm not uh, diving towards the target steeply enough. Uh, let's come back around. And let's see if we can do a better job of it this time. Okay, just about rolling in on the target. Target should be here. Here we go. That's good. Let's maintain our altitude. And now we'll begin a dive. And let's see if we can get this a bit better this time. Diving towards... Sorry, it still says I should be steeper. Okay. Okay. Let's pause there. Uh, I held the trigger and then immediately pulled pulled away. If I go to F6, oh wow, that's quite an action shot, isn't it? Uh, we can see there's the aircraft, there's the target, and there are the bombs. I'm actually just going to um, hold the camera here and unpause. That was actually a very, very good hit. That was a very good hit. You can see that basically we spread right across the target diagonally. That looks really, really good. Excellent. Alrighty, so that's how you do it in CCIP mode. That was actually not too bad. And, and you know, for accuracy, you're going to want as steep an angle as possible in order to get the best result on target. Now, uh, as I said, you can only do CCIP with high drag bombs. That's the way the aircraft is set up. We'll now swap out these Mark 82 airs for normal Mark 82s, and I'll demonstrate CCRP. Okay, so I've reset the aircraft and we're back inbound towards the target area. Setup is basically the same. I've selected, uh, let me zoom down here on the, the PPA, I've selected eight bombs to drop, again with 40 meter spacing. This time I've set the uh, fusing to instantaneous, uh, and you'll see that the profile I've selected is BL1 instead of BF1 this time. So that's telling us that we have low drag bombs. Master Arm is on, and now if I go ahead and press a Weapon System Command forward, I'm going to get slightly different symbology. Uh, so you'll see that now I have a diamond with wings. This is my CCRP designator. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is place this on the target, and then I'm going to depress, uh, I think it's Weapon Designate. Let me actually just double check what this button is called. Uh, Magic Slave AG Designate INS Position Update. This is the button you want. This is normally going to be on your throttle. Uh, so I'm going to place this diamond over the target and press that button, uh, AG Designate. You can actually press that uh, multiple times if you want to redesignate, uh, but this is the, the basic symbology we're going to have. And once again, I'm going to attack uh, the bomb circle, which is at my INS waypoint. So let's uh, come out of active pause. We're going to dive towards the target. I'm going to put the diamond on there as best I can. Once again, wings mean it's going to be accurately computed. Oh, no. Let's try again. There. 
designated. I'm going to come off target initially uh, because I want to do a better job of um, lining up with this and attacking it. So we're going to come away and get some distance. You can see distance to the designated point here. Now, one problem in the Mirage is that it won't actually display that position on the HUD. Uh, it will only give you cues to steer towards it, which is a bit weird, but that's the way the system works. I'm gonna go out to 10 kilometers, I'm gonna turn back in, and then when we start to get symbology, I will talk you through the symbology. Okay, so let's, uh, let's come back around. Now, you'll note that I now have these kind of horizon bars either side of the diamond. Uh, what I want to do is, once I'm correctly lined up, I want to actually get those uh, aligned as they are now, in fact. Uh, that's the, the position I want to have them in, in order to correctly line myself up for the pass. So for this pass, I'm going to fly level, and I'm going to keep all the horizon bars completely level. And we're then looking for a horizontal bar to appear below the diamond. It'll do that once we are 15 seconds to launch. There it is. When I see that, I'm going to pull the trigger to second stage and hold it. And we're going to wait for that to intersect the diamond. Once it intersects the diamond, we will begin releasing weapons automatically. And there we go, bombs away. I'm going to pause there. So you saw that the horizontal line approached the diamond, it then appeared above the diamond for a period of time, and then disappeared. While it's appearing above the diamond, that's indicating that release is progressing. If I now display my weapons, we can see they all came off. Again, nice little action shot here. And uh, we can go ahead and follow them on the way down. And let's see just how accurate we managed to get this. Um, now, of course, CCRP is a less accurate method of employing bombs, so it's not going to be nearly as good, but let's see what we get here. Okay, not terrible. Actually, not terrible. Uh, we were offset to the left a little bit. The steering error is going to be the thing that tends to get you, because you need to absolutely perfectly line up these horizon bars, uh, which I didn't do, but uh, still, that's, uh, that's about as good as you're going to get, I would say, from CCRP uh, in this aircraft. And like I said, it's a little bit weird that you don't get target position information on the HUD or even on the VTB. Uh, you just have to follow the steering cues. Uh, all you get are the steering cues and the distance, which is slightly odd, but it does work. And so there you go. That is the standard method of uh, dropping uh, unguided weapons, unguided bombs in this case, in the Mirage 2000. Uh, I demonstrated both low drag and high drag. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Additionally, you also have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew for a small monthly fee by pressing the join button below. Uh, big shout out to those of you who've already done so. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Shandor Hedgewald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinker Tan, Tiger Moto, Sean I Am 81, Charts, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and fly safe.